To set up your material properties in Revit, first come underneath the Manage tab on the ribbon and then find Materials over toward the left hand side. When you select on Materials, you'll get the Material Browser dialog box. And one of the things you'll notice is that you'll have a list of materials over on the left hand side. And depending on which material it is that you have selected, you'll have a variety of different options underneath the Graphics tab. In this case, we have Acoustical Ceiling Tile 24 by 24. And we can see here where it has the word shading, there's a color associated with it. Now this is going to be the color that will show up when you click on Shaded View or some sort of shading option down here inside of your view. Surface Pattern. This is going to be the pattern, in this case, of the ceiling tile. And it's a 24 by 24 tile. There's also currently none associated with the pattern for the cut pattern. This means if we do a section through it, there won't be any material indication as we cut a section through it. Now there'll still be the lines for the outsides of the material, just no symbology for what makes up that material as we're cutting through it. If I come down here on the list, we can see that one of the options here is a brick common. If you highlight on brick common, here with shading, it's red. This is the reason why if you turn on your shading, your brick will look red inside of the Revit view. It's whatever the color is right here, that's the color that that will look when you turn on your shading. There's surface pattern. This is the reason why brick looks like there's multiple courses of brick. In reality, Revit only knows that brick has a certain thickness associated with it. It does not know that there are X number of bricks inside of that wall, for instance. So the reason why it looks the way that it does is because of whatever the surface pattern says. The cut pattern, that's once again cutting through that material. In this case, it's the lines that are going diagonal. If we want that color of the pattern itself, so each of these lines have its own color, we could do that by just clicking inside of this box here where it has color and specifying a different color. And you could do the same thing here where it has surface pattern, click, and then specify a different color. Where it has shading, there's also a checkbox that says Use Render Appearance. And if we check that, we can see that this just changed to be a different color. And the reasoning behind that is there's a tab called Appearance. If you select on the Appearance tab, we can see what the PNG file is that's associated with this kind of brick. The color that shows up here underneath Shading, it's trying to emulate the color that's associated with this image. If you want to have it render as a different color, a different looking brick, you can simply replace this image with another PNG file, a JPEG file, a standard image file that shows that material. And then when it comes time to render, that's what it'll look like. It'll look like that material repeating again and again and again on the object. So if you want your materials to have a certain display representation when it comes time to render, you would change those appearances underneath the Appearance tab in your Material Browser which you can find underneath Manage and Materials. If you want it to change in your more drafting states or your elevation states, you can do that as well. Just make sure that you're underneath the Graphics tab, change the color where shading is at. In this case, we have this dark color because that matches what's here on the appearance. Or by clearing this out, you can then click inside of the box where it says Color and then specify whatever color you'd like that to display as in your display representation. I'm just going to click on Cancel to this. And finally, there's surface patterns and cut patterns that you can set. These are based off of the fill patterns that are available to you. If I select here where it has a pattern in brick, I could then pick off of the fill patterns list any other kind of symbology that I'd want. If I picked brick soldier course, just for an example, and click on OK, we can now see that it would have a brick soldier course pattern and the color associated with it. And the exact same properties apply with the cut pattern. You can click inside there and specify a different cut pattern so that that material designation looks different when you create your section views.